Uh, hi students uh, today uh, i what i want is uh, that uh, as we have started uh, discussing negative resistance devices in the last class we talked about tunnel diode and its operating mm -hmm. i want uh, to develop a little bit more uh, further understanding on what this uh, phenomena of negative resistance means because beyond tunnel diode the other devices that we are going to study needs a bit more understanding of, about the idea of negative resistance. Uh, what kind of devices do we expect from there? What kind of devices do we uh, expect to uh, create from a negative resistance substance? And uh, further, uh, more uh, that uh, more fundamentally asking that um, what do we mean by negative resistance in case of uh, that's just if we just think beyond uh, that uh, the slope of the um, IV characteristics. So. The, uh, today, uh, I, I just I'll just have a very quick uh, discussion on uh, these these aspects, and I hope that it, this will help us to understand the uh, the devices that we are going to discuss next: gun diodes and impacts, uh, and and that family. So, uh, the first thing that I uh, need need uh, you to appreciate is that uh, these devices that have negative resistance, we expect a graph where uh, IV characteristics will be uh, something like this, where uh, your uh, current, in a, in a certain region at least, your current uh, should decrease as you are increasing the voltage. The current should decrease as you are increasing your voltage. Something like that uh, gives us the understanding of negative resistance, right, from the slope of the graph. But beyond this, if we want to think, there is also another aspect that we can think of. And that is in terms of uh, the phase of, of current and voltage, okay? So if we think about that, uh, if we think about a device where uh, with time, I am, I am seeing that how my current and voltage both are changing, uh, I want to plot them, then uh, say for voltage, I'm having uh, an AC kind of a response where, uh, where this kind of a voltage is being applied to the system. Okay. Now, uh, now in this scenario, if I have a current, if I have a current uh, that is also varying in, in a similar phase, okay, so there is no phase lag between uh, the current and voltage, then from this graph, this kind of a behavior, if I want to see that what is the resistance that I expect from this kind of a device, then uh, I can conclude that mm, the current is increasing when the voltage is increasing. So up to this point, the voltage is also increasing and the current is also increasing, right? Beyond this point, the voltage starts decreasing and the current starts decreasing. So the phase between these two uh, signals that we see here basically, uh, basically shows you that uh, the, the phase lag between these two, uh, sub, these two um, parameters, current and voltage, basically can reflect the resistance. So you can you can just see that where I'm, which direction I am heading towards. That if I have a system where the current and the voltage are out of phase, so my voltage is something like this, while the current is going in a phase lag, in a in a lag phase lead or lag where you have out of phase behavior of current and voltage. Then what do we have here? If here I want to track, then I see something really interesting that as the voltage was increasing, the current was decreasing. And again, when the voltage was decreasing, the current is increasing, right? So this is the first uh, important point that I need uh, to highlight about this negative resistance devices that don't just think in terms of the IV characteristics where where you have these uh, slopes, which is going the other way. But in case of AC signals, the phase of the two, two uh, parameters, uh, current and voltage, that basically tells you many things about the circuit, uh, also points out about the resistance of the device. So this is the first thing that I need to understand, I need you to understand that if the current and voltage are out of phase by 180 degree in one device, then that device is also a negative resistance device. Okay, so in a in a negative resistance device, you expect the current and voltage to be out of phase. 
Okay, so that is one very important point that I needed to highlight. The second point also comes from here only. So that second point you can also understand from here only is that uh, is is about the power. Okay, so uh, here I, I will introduce two two points uh, two uh, classifications of devices: active device and passive device, which uh, I I think some of you might have heard of. So uh, active devices and passive devices can be categorized based on the power generated or the power dissipated at the device. Okay, so how do we uh, categorize this power? So we know that uh, power is given by so power dissipated uh, or power uh, generated at a certain uh, certain device will be given by I square R. Okay, but what is the sign of this I square R? Okay, so if I have this lagging uh, thing that one, um, the, 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 these two are out of phase uh, from each other, then this resistance that I have here is negative, right? So in case of positive resistance devices, what I expect is that the power is going to get dissipated. So that device is bound to absorb some power, use some power to perform the uh, actions that it is supposed to perform. But when the resistance becomes negative, I have a negative sign in front of it. I have a negative sign in front of it because of the resistance being negative. So that basically means that if I square R in case of those devices where which were absorbing power, if you consider that to be positive, then this is negative, right? So there. Uh, the phenomena was dissipation of power, usage of power. Then something just reverse uh, of that is supposed to happen in case of negative resistance devices. So in negative resistance devices, you are supposed to gain some power or generate some power uh, at those devices. Okay. So these devices simply means that these devices could be used as generators. Okay. So they can be used as generators where you can have some power generated because of uh, the uh, negative resistance of the devices. So these devices are basically called active devices, whereas uh, we generate power, whereas the passive devices are those where you have absorbance of power. So here you have positive resistance devices and here you have negative resistance devices, okay? So this is the second point that I needed to highlight based on just the sign of, of uh, the uh, of the devices, uh, of the resistance of the devices that uh, you can have a positive or a negative uh, resistance and that can point out that the system with that you are dealing with is a generator or, uh, uh, or it is absorbing uh, some power using some power. Okay, so these these are the two points uh, that I needed to highlight, uh, and and there is also a third point that uh, that that is a little bit more mathematical, and that is uh, directly related to what we are going to discuss in the next class. So let me just uh, that as well, and for that I'm going to use uh, a little bit of um, our. Uh, Maxwell's equations, which uh, I guess uh, you are familiar with. If you are not, you can go and have a look uh, at the Maxwell's equations. So here I will just manipulate the equations a little bit to show you another beautiful property that is expected in a negative resistance devices. So um, uh, uh, the third property we are discussing is completely mathematical, uh, uh, has a completely mathematical basis. And from there we uh, see a, a beautiful phenomena that is basically observed in gun diodes. And we'll talk about that in the next class. So this comes from a derivation from our Ohm's law where uh, you have the definition of current density J E V, right? In number of electrons, charge, and velocity. So this is the current density. That is also given by sigma E from Ohm's law. So Ohm's law tells you that J is equal to sigma E. That is another form of Ohm's law and we know that. So uh, uh, we, we, are, we are accustomed with all those, these terms. If you uh, forgot anything uh, about these definitions, just refresh your, uh, refresh your uh, uh, study on electrostatics and electrodynamics a little bit and you will understand these equations. This will, be, uh, this will come back to you. I am sure that you know these equations. So J is equal to NEV is uh, the definition of current density and Ohm's law tells us that it is equal to sigma into E. Now, uh, so if I consider uh, that how the current changes with the voltage, okay, 
DIDV, so a little bit change of voltage, how does the current uh, changes with that? Uh, that is basically uh, writing the same thing as how the electric field affects the current density. Because uh, in both the cases, you are, take, you are considering them uh, as, a, as a kind of as a um, density. So I becomes, I, the current becomes current density, similar happens there. So this is also uh, from Ohm's law, we can write this. So if, if I now use this equation, J is equal to NEV, then uh, M is the number, uh, E is the charge. So these are not the parameters that are going to change, right? So what is going to change then? If I see that how electric, uh, by applying a electric field, the current density can change, then uh, the velocity is basically the quantity that is getting affected, right? So the number or, or the charge of electrons are not going to change if you apply some electric field to a pool of electrons. The thing that is going to change is the velocity, and that is uh, going to uh, give rise to uh, whatever we see in case of Ohm's law. So if I am trying to calculate DJDE from this equation, these two are going to be treated as constant. And I can simply write DVDE. So how the velocity changes with electric field, right? And what is this quantity? This is the quantity that we define as mu. So N E mu. Mu is the uh, mobility, right? So we, we define it uh, like this. So for negative resistance, we'll have negative conductance, right? So V is equal to IR, that means DIDV basically gives us the conductance, differential conductance of the device, right? The reverse of differential that means here also whatever it is, so it cannot go, it's not going to change sign because I'm working in a negative resistance device. So the only thing that is going to change its sign is this. Okay, so mm, here I can write that for negative mm, conductance, for negative conductance, we have mu is equal to dv by dE, and that is a negative quantity. Okay, so that is uh, one thing that we, we can remember. So moreover, we can also uh, look into one important thing. Uh, we will keep this in mind and we'll use that later. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, look into one important thing that uh, suppose in a negative resistance uh, device, uh, a charge imbalance gets created. Okay, suppose in a, in a negative resistance device somewhere, some charge starts getting accumulated. So if I have a scenario like that, uh, then uh, is that charge, uh, what is going to happen to this, that, that charge? That is the question, okay? So uh, you will understand that why I am asking this question, but this is a device, and if uh, a charge imbalance gets created somewhere, I have uh, some excess charge present, as if like cluster, then uh, what is going to happen to that charge as time goes on? So here, uh, we know that if, if uh, the velocity is positive, the mobility is positive, then uh, that charge decays. That charge is supposed to decay because uh, it prefers an uniformity throughout the system. It prefers an uniform distribution. But what happens here? So for that, we are going to use uh, two. So we come up with that is equal to del D del T plus J, okay? So uh, this is to uh, understand that uh, this is uh, one of the very important Maxwell's equations that points out that uh, how uh, the magnetic field uh, H, its curl, is going to be get dependent on uh, the displacement current, okay? And, and the current uh, flowing into the circuit. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, one of the very important Maxwell's equations. Now we start from here, and what we do is we take divergence on both sides. Okay, so we take divergence on both sides. So divergence of this I am taking here. So here also I will take del del t, and divergence will come into this. So divergence of uh, d, and then plus divergence of j and that is equal to zero okay why it is equal to zero because divergence of curl is always equal to 
to zero. So from your vector knowledge, you know that convergence of curl of any vector is always going to be zero. So this is going to be uh, equal to zero. Okay. So that, that simply means that this quantity that I have here is basically equation the charge density. So it tells the first Maxwell's equation that comes from the Gauss's law of electrostatics. That tells you that uh, the mm, uh, divergence of D is basically uh, del rho del T. It, 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 the rho that is that is that tells you that if you don't have a charge, then you cannot have an electric field, something like that. Okay. So uh, so del rho del T yeah, that is also a Maxwell's equation. We replace that, and here in the in the last term, I replace j is equal to sigma e from my uh, knowledge of ohm's law so i write j is equal to sigma e e is going to be the vector here j is equal to sigma e i replace that from my knowledge of uh, ohm's law and i'm putting in the that is, is equal to zero okay now electric field is again given that is uh, that is something that you also know so del rho del t plus Okay, again another Maxwell's equation is coming out to be so this uh, this equation that we have might be a little bit mathematical, a little bit more, and go through it once again to understand that uh, what is happening here. And just look into this equation, and what do you see? What we Here is the charge. Charge is going to obey a relation like this because the solution of this is going to give you how rho changes with time, right? It is going to give you how the charge density varies with time. Okay, so if we have an equation like this, okay, if we have an equation like this, then the charge density, how how it is going to change? It is going to depend on what is the sign of the quantity sigma by epsilon, right? What is the sign of the quantity sigma by epsilon? So sigma, because, because this is going to be an exponential solution, right? So you, you are going to have something like rho zero e to the power minus sigma by epsilon times t, something like that is going to be a solution of this equation, right? Okay, and what is sigma? We, we have defined that, right? So here I have seen that sigma is basically given by n e mu, right? So sigma is basically given by n e mu, okay? So if I compare these two equations, that is what I get, right? So that, that simply means that with time, the charge will increase or decrease basically depends on the sign of mu, the mobility, okay? And if I have a negative resistance device, if I have a negative resistance device, then because of the negative, uh, for negative conductance devices, we have mu also negative. If I have a charge imbalance and a heterogeneity, some in uh, heterogeneity growing, inside a, 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 a negative resistance device that is supposed to increase with time, okay? So this is a very, very important understanding that if I have by chance in a negative conductance uh, system, if I have by chance a, a cluster of, of a charge, okay, a charge uh, imbalance happens and somewhere I have a cluster of some charge uh, growing, then that particular thing will not decay with time, is not going to prefer a homogeneous kind of a distribution, but it is going to grow with time and that charge is going to accumulate further and further in that particular position. So this is a phenomena of charge accumulation. So this is a phenomena of charge accumulation in negative resistance devices, charge accumulation. And we will see that how this leads to a, a phenomena called dipole formation and uh, uh, gener uh, and uh, entire principle of how a gun diode functions uh, that basically depends on this. So if the mathematics uh, seems a little bit uh, 
confusing to you uh, I, i can assure you that everything is just simple vector algebra and some usage of basic uh, electrodynamics laws which are written in form of maxwell's equations so just have a look um, at uh, the maxwell's equations reflect re refresh your memory of uh, the different forms of ohm's law uh, the definition of conductance resistance mobility and you will understand this derivation and you will understand that why a charge uh, if if it accumulates inside a negative conductance device grows with time and gives rise to a phenomena of charge accumulation okay so i will uh, stop at this point and some deep understanding about the negative conductance conductance devices the phenomena of charge accumulation the power generator thing that it it is basically generating some power and also uh, the fundamental uh, concept of phase and how it can be related to uh, negative conductance okay so i will stop at this point and we will uh, meet at uh, the next class and discuss the device uh, which is called a gun diode okay so see you in the next class